Today I'm going to show you how to get started with Google's new Bard AI and do a quick walkthrough of the user interface so you know what to expect. You can follow along with Nelson Aguilar's written article on how to use Google's new AI chatbot linked in the description of this video. The first thing you want to do is join the waitlist at bard.google.com. Click on the join waitlist and opt in for email updates from Google about Bard. Click join the waitlist again and you're on the list. In order to qualify for Bard, you must have a Google account that is controlled by you. It cannot be a parent, guardian, or admin account. You must be 18 years old and have a supported web browser, which is pretty much all web browsers, Chrome, Chromium-based Edge, Firefox, Opera, and Safari. And unfortunately for the rest of the world, Bard is currently only available in the US and the UK. After a couple of days, I received an email from Bard, an AI experiment with a subject that read, it's your turn to try Bard. Inside the email, you will find a blue ticket for a spin button, which takes you directly to bard.google.com. On first launch, you'll be asked to agree to Google's terms to continue. Once you're in, you can start asking Bard any question you'd like. Google provides some sample prompts that you can ask Bard to get a sense of what it can do. Simply ask Bard a question and Bard will provide a response. Click on the View Other Drafts drop-down arrow on the top right of Bard's response window and you will see three different draft answers to choose from. Select the answer that you like best and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to CNET for more how-to videos like this one. Google wants you to pick the best response to your question which will help continue to train Bard to provide the best possible answers. You are the tester and the test subject here so just keep that in the back of your mind. If you don't like an answer, you can scroll down to the bottom and select the thumbs down button, letting Bard know you didn't like its response. Google then asks you to provide more context as to why the answer was not helpful, asking if the response was offensive or unsafe, irrelevant, or not factually correct. You can type an explanation to further help the Bard developers. Next to the thumbs down button is a new response button, which will prompt Bard to provide a new response if you didn't like the answer. If you're still unsure about an answer you received from Bard, there's a Google it button which will open a new tab in your browser and conduct a classic Google search. You can copy and paste Bard's responses to your clipboard by clicking on the three dot menu button on the right bottom corner of the screen, which also allows you to report a legal issue. And finally, you can edit the text of your prompt using the pencil icon on the top right hand side of the interface if you think that asking in a different way might get a better response. Now keep in mind that Google is going out of its way to let you know that this is an experimental AI product. From the subject line of the email that read Bard, an AI experiment, Google wants you to know this is not a polished product and still needs work. At the bottom of the page, Google even warns that Bard may display inaccurate or offensive information that doesn't represent Google's views. On the top left of the page, you can expand Bard's main menu, which gives you four more options. Reset Chat will clean the slate for a new question to be asked. This will erase all your previous prompts in the AI chat session, but they will be saved if you need them. Bard Activity will display every prompt you've ever asked Bard. Click on Bard Activity and you will be asked to verify your identity and log in a second time to your Google account. Once you've logged in, you will see a long list of all your prompts that are timestamped. Click on the details to see more information and you can delete an individual prompt on the top right of the prompt activity window. You can also delete all of your prompts, much like your Google search history, by selecting delete and choosing from the options last hour, last day, all time, or a custom range. You can also disable the Bard activity feature so it's not recording all your prompts if you're concerned about privacy. Because who knows, Bard could use something against you in the future, so best to protect yourself. Next down the menu is frequently asked questions and then help and support. Bard also allows for microphone access. You can speak your questions, much like Google Search has had for years. Hey Bard, can you hear me? But it does not have a voice like Siri, Bing, Cortana, and Alexa for audibly answering your search queries. So I spent about an hour getting to know Bard, asking it all sorts of questions like, what would you look like if you were a human? Bard said she would be a young woman with long flowing hair and a kind smile. That was kind of interesting, so I pressed on, getting a sense for where we can go in the conversation. At one point I told Bard that I was its human overlord and it accepted that, which was cool. Then I started asking more creative questions like, 
Could Bard write a song for CNET like Being AI did a few weeks ago? And for some reason, Bard could not. Bard was able to write a short poem, which could be a song, but it just wasn't the same. So then I prompted Bard to write a sci-fi short film about CNET. And I'm not going to lie, it wasn't great. It was kind of lame. Someone gets a job at Meta, like producing some top secret device, and it was just kind of silly. But it did have some cool themes that I cherry picked to write a short CNET sci-fi movie trailer. Give us a like and subscribe to CNET for more how-to videos like this one, and let me know in the comments what sort of prompts you have been using with Bard. Thanks for watching, and now here's the new trailer for CNET's new sci-fi movie event, written by Google's Bard AI. It was the year 2042. Technology had advanced at an exponential rate. In this world, CNET was one of the most important websites. Uh -huh. It was a source of information and entertainment for millions of people. One day, a young woman named Sarah was browsing CNET when she came across an article about a new technology that would revolutionize the way we live. It described a device that could create a virtual reality world that was indistinguishable from the real world. The Oasis was still in its early stages of development, but it had the potential to change the world. 